I did have acquaintances with famous scientists very early in my career. Uh, this is actually, looking back, it is, uh, it is actually strange how early I was uh, put together on uh, important occasions with many Nobel laureates. The most important connection for me was with Max Perutz. And this happened in the way that I started to work on hemoglobin in connection with my sports interest in improving oxygen supply. So I actually took my own blood and uh, studied my own hemoglobin. And uh, when Max Perutz heard about I was at Bell Telephone Labs at the time. This was in 1968. And when Max Perutz heard about this work, he bought the plane ticket and came to the United States to see me. And uh, so he contacted the head of research at Bell Labs, who didn't know me, of course, because I was a very junior member of technical staff. And then eventually they found out what he wanted, and then he spent two days with me. Just, and then he borrowed slides from me, which he showed around the world because what I did with my hemoglobin was fully complementary to his Nobel Prize work on hemoglobin. And he, we had interactions continuously. He, his mother-in-law lived in Zurich, so he had to visit Zurich several times a year. And we, he would come to the lab. He would, he would give seminars, one hour, two hour seminars, to my group, which was about five students at the time. Just come to my office and talk to the students for an hour. He was very enthusiastic about his work. So that was the closest uh, connection. But then I learned to know John Kendrew, Fitzy Linen. Then we had long tours in the Soviet Union on invitation by Yovchinikov. And there would be Pauling, Dorothy Hodgkin, and so on. And so I, I mingled with these people who were all 30 years older than me. And I, I lost uh, fear of these people. You see, if you spend two weeks with Pauling, you know about his weaknesses, about, uh, as well as about his intellectual strengths. And that's very reassuring in some ways.